with me. I know that I shared that I would be on live at I think 8:22 or 8:11 and it's 7:19. So your girl, I was not going to make it. I felt myself, you know, just getting tired and <clears throat> I could have still done the latter time, but I wanted to be more alert. I wanted my energy to be really good when I came on and if you don't know I'm an early riser and I turn in kind of early too so I'm here and I'm early uh, and you see in the title abundance is healing so I was actually gonna come on yesterday but I I wasn't in alignment right and I'm glad that I waited because in the process of coming on, I knew I wanted to talk to you about abundance, but there was something so significant that was downloaded to me in between yesterday and today as it relates to abundance. So I'm glad that I waited and I'm also here early. So if you could do me a favor, if you come on, if you just happen to catch me and you weren't expecting me, please be sure to share the broadcast out. So that maybe some of those who were anticipating the later time can catch us live now and have this conversation with us in real time. Um, if you find value in my shares, if you've been connecting and vibing and you know that your life has been transforming through our connections, I'm sure there's someone on your timeline who would find value in this as well. Um, one of the things that I decided last year about 2023 is that I wasn't going to create a lot of new things. Um, I have this little saying that I've been saying for many, many years and that saying is um, go deep before you go wide. And so this is my go deep season and so I'm taking uh, things that I've already created and simply taking them to a new level. Somebody put new level in the comments even if you come back in on the replay I'm simply taking them to a new level and so I also felt like like really sharing deeper meaning behind the things that I'm sharing for my audience on social media um, the people who work with me privately they get that anyway um, but I want to at least take it I want to say up a notch but down a notch or a little deeper with you as well. And so I'm going to do that from the perspective of abundance. Now my first thing that I want to do is ask you what abundance means to you. What does abundance mean to you? Put that in the comments for me. What does abundance mean to you? Now many of you may earn several thousands of dollars per week. That may be um, nothing new for you and then for some of you who come on you know that's not necessarily the case but either way abundance is very much about you it's very much about um, well another a new level of abundance is very much about a new level of you now when we hear abundance it is very likely you know I still have to catch myself as well that we hear money right so the thought that comes to mind when we hear the word abundance often leads to money and that's cool because abundance does include money so for those of you who are there saying prosperity don't include money and all those things it includes money abundance includes money but money is actually a byproduct y'all gotta hear me on this on something much deeper than just money itself being abundance. So when you think about abundance and you think about the fact that I shared that you are like the central space from which abundance comes, sometimes there's a likelihood to tie the net worth into the self worth. This is a huge mistake because they're two different things. Because people can be successful but not be abundant. People can earn a lot of money, but not be abundant. I'm gonna break it all the way down for us on this evening. I'm gonna take a moment uh, to share with you 
that tonight at 12 o'clock, the She Prospers Mastermind, which is totally focused on abundance, it increases in prices. So on the 26th, which is Sunday, I hope I'm getting my dates right, but I know I have the day right. So this Sunday, we actually begin the She Prospers Mastermind, which is a four-week mastermind where we immerse ourselves into abundance. We uncover limiting beliefs and we get in the energy and the mindset of all things abundance. Right now, the mastermind is $777 to join. It will go up tomorrow and then it will continue to increase by Sunday at which time it will be at its regular price which is $1,111 but for those of you joining us tonight you get it for $777 and there's also an installment option where I think it's $214 will save your seat right and then you'll have recurring payments to finish that out so I wanted to share that before we get moving before we get into this deeper conversation about abundance, I was sharing that, you know, many of you who come on, you know, making thousands of dollars a week may be nothing new to you. And then there are some of you who that is new, but at the center of it all, as it relates to abundance, is you. Now, I also shared that just because you earn a lot of money doesn't mean you're abundant. Um, just because you become successful in the the, the rite of passage to earning a lot of money doesn't mean that you're abundant because success can be earned through hard work, through ambition, through drive, you know, all of those things. It can definitely lead to measures of success. Um, but oftentimes it's such a huge price to pay. And I've been talking about the space that that hard work and hustle leaves us as women, oftentimes it leads to the detriment of our health. Not just women, but men as well. And so the success that's gained through that just constant hard work, ambition, and drive is, is often a heavy price to pay. Um, family time is normally one. Well-being is another price that's often paid. Friendships experiences because you know it's just simply focused on you know go get the money go get the money go get the money okay so as I was saying because I just went all over the place with that one kind of lost my train of thought I'm bringing it back right so whenever success is earned through hard work ambition and drive it doesn't necessarily equate to abundance now remember I said your network and your self work are self-worth they're not the same they're not the same so when you think about abundance you want to think about love security safety this is when all of these things are transpiring in your life infinite possibility infinite creativity belongingness insight um, higher levels of consciousness and money right all of those things are inclusive when we think about abundance. So we know people who may earn a lot of money, they don't have love or they don't feel safe or secure. They don't feel like there's a sense of belongingness, which may be the reason why they have such a hard drive towards abundance. But when we have um, this totality of abundance in our life, we begin to attract it. And I'm gonna show you guys a, a little bit deeper uh, what I mean by that and if you notice the title says abundance is healing so I'm gonna talk about a subject that you probably don't think about when you think about abundance and I get it because it's actually the opposite right of abundance but I'm gonna use it to tie in to show you how abundance can be lacking in one space in your life and be impacting other areas and that's through jealousy so jealousy is a natural emotion guys so if you've had moments where you felt jealous it's it's natural it's a natural human emotion to experience jealousy and this is how jealousy originates so normally jealousy comes because you see a thing or person who has something that you admire or that you desire but when it goes unchecked 
it turns into jealousy. Now jealousy only comes from a space of loss or a space of scarcity. Let me know if you guys know where I'm going with this because we know we can't have abundance and scarcity at the same time. So what happens in the natural human emotion for us to desire things and admire things and, and want things, be inspired by things, when it goes unchecked, it turns into jealousy. And then based on how we are emotionally will determine how we handle those situations. But jealousy always comes from a space of comparison. Y'all got to hear me on this one. It always comes from a space of comparison, meaning you actually see something that you admire or that you like or that you desire that you, and then you, that turns into you comparing your situation, whether it's a loving relationship or, you know, maybe someone is at a, a financial realm that you haven't reached yet, or they may have an object or something. It's actually, it actually first begins without thinking from a space of admiration, desire. Um, and then when it goes unchecked, because comparison steps in, it turns into jealousy. And then when it goes unchecked, it turns into this energy that is transferred in many different ways. It impacts how we show up and how we're being. So I wanna share that as a way to highlight what abundance is and how even if you earn a lot of money but you still may have these different things that you may be dealing with is coming from a space of lack and where that that thought process is or that feeling of loss or as if it's not possible for you it's difficult to get in a space of abundance where you're actually attracting it into your life. I hope this is making sense. I'm going to give you guys an example, two examples. I'm going to use myself, throw myself completely under the bus, right? Which is what I normally do for, for you guys. So earlier when I was thinking about, you know, how, how I would come on and talk about the deeper aspects of abundance and how it's so important, guys that we go through and we do our own inner work and you know jealousy can be used as a tool because if there's something that we're triggered by or that we find in what when we step into awareness that we're jealous of it often um highlights something that we actually value that we may not have thought about as a value for us it could be a, a measure of income or an income goal or a type of relationship. It could be something that we've been saying we don't even desire, but jealousy, when used properly, will help you identify something that you really value, that's actually a bigger value of you. And then you can emotionally, emotionally look at that thing and then turn it into a different space of alignment, a different space of, of thinking, processing, and then finding new steps in order to implement to have or be those things in, in your life. So examples. I was thinking earlier as it relates to, to jealousy and one of the things mm -hmm. I realized mm -hmm. is a lot of the things that occur for us in our life normally stem from our childhood experiences. They go way back. Like from zero to the age of seven, our brain is actually in what's called a theta stage. And that is the stage of receiving, just soaking everything in. So oftentimes as a child, that's the time where you're absorbing everything. You're kind of learning how to be in the world. And based on what we saw around us and what was happening in our environment, we began to form our first space of identity. We began to form our, our first like mindset at that particular stage. Isn't it amazing how early it happens? And when, if it's um, something that is not necessarily beneficial, highly beneficial to us in our adult life, if it goes unchecked, it begins to create re results in our life. So I remember when I was in junior high school, I was a cheerleader. And I'm from a small town, so we had one um, 
junior high school. Everybody went to that junior high school. And it was out in the county. And when we finished practicing at the junior high school, the school bus would take us, well, those children that lived in the city, we would be bused to the high school that was in the city part of town, not out in the county, making it easier for all the parents, you know, to pick us up. So I would ride the bus from the county to the high school, from the junior high in the county to the high school in the city, uh, which was only a few moments away from my home and my, my mom would pick me up. And I remember on three occasions, there were some high school girls who um, made it known to me that when I came to high school, they were going to get me. Now, I was kind of lost because I didn't know them in that manner. I hadn't done anything to them and I just didn't I didn't even understand where it was coming from I was actually telling my girlfriend about this earlier today because I was processing it like really kind of walking back to that time and I realized that I wasn't afraid I don't know why I wasn't afraid right these are high school girls telling me they're gonna get me and they said it on more than one occasion um, but I say all this to say that early in my life I became highly aware of how people were experiencing me I hope this is making sense to you all I was very aware of people's responses even if they said one thing but they meant something else even if they said they were friends of mine I for whatever reason could identify how people were experiencing me whether I had done anything to them at, or not. I hope you guys get this. And so this wasn't the only incident where this was occurring. I had incidents where, um, so at the time I kind of wore my hair straight. It was past my shoulders. I wear a ponytail. Um, I would get comments about my hair and me thinking that I'm better than other people even my my language you know so there were people who looked just like me right who would say I thought I was Caucasian because I use proper English y'all know we got to stop doing that right anyway I had several different incidents with girls who look like me who would say or do things that were unkind and I hadn't done anything to them. Now this is tying into what I was talking about because I understand now, I didn't know what to call it then, right? I was young. Um, I understand now where those thoughts were coming from, where that was generating from because I understand that jealousy is a sense of loss is something that you feel or whoever is experiencing it feels that that um, someone else has that they don't know I don't know what the thing was that may have been perceived that I had at that time but I do know that I experienced that quite a bit and so remember we talked about things from childhood where um, you know we get we have learned behaviors um, there may have been things that may have been lacking or that um, they hadn't experienced that in their mind they perceived that I was experiencing let me take it another space okay because you know that might not have rubbed everybody the right way but I never remembered during that season of my life me having those feelings towards other people like I, I wasn't a child that was angry because someone else had something that I didn't have or was experiencing something that I didn't experience. If anything, I would want to know how it, how can I experience it. I remember asking my mom to be able to do certain things that some of the other children would do and she was like, I'm not their mama, I'm your mama and my answer is no, right? So that's the only space that I can remember like desiring things but for me it hadn't turned into jealousy however in my adult life 
right? Now remember I said that jealousy stems from loss. It stems from scarcity thinking. It's a space where you think, because it's all perception, right? That someone else has something that is not possible for you to have, that you don't have, that you're um, disappointed or angry about. So now I hadn't experienced it as a teenager or, or as a young girl, but in my adult life, I did, right? And I remember it happening a lot for me when I entered into an unhealthy relationship. I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere here. Ladies, are you guys with me? So I have a, a guy friend that, that I used to date and we are platonic friends now. I mean, completely platonic friends. But one of the things he always stated was that I was so easygoing. I wasn't tripping. I remember we had gone to Florida at one particular time and uh, one of his guy friends flew into the area as well and it was a party that I was supposed to be going to with them as well and I didn't want to go. I was tired. I had traveled. I was like, you go ahead. Like I was really, really easy going. He said, you gonna let me. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be here when you get back, right? There was a sense of, of certainty that I existed in during that time but and and that's how I had experienced my relationships prior to the one that I'm going to share about now but when I moved into an unhealthy relationship because remember I said jealousy comes from loss the feeling of loss it's about loss it's about lack it's about um, feeling that someone has something that that you don't have and so when I entered into an unhealthy relationship where there was there was no loyalty, there was constant, you know, lying, there was, um, you know, all the things. That's when jealousy began in my life. And as I have entered into the dating realm again, one, I've done a lot of healing right I've done a lot of inner work I've done a lot of abundance practices because when you feel abundant that doesn't occur but I've spent so many years lacking different things whether it was loyalty or um, trust you know you it it begins to form one in your subconscious mind I've been talking about this for a while but it begins to form in your body on a cellular level. And it was one of the things that abundance, you know, working on an abundant mindset helped me to heal. And now that I'm dating again, every blue moon I'll have to catch myself. And without reason, now I may not say it to them, but this is me and you talking here, okay ladies? But without reason, I find myself feeling jealous, but it's, it's because of things that I had gone through in my past, right? And whenever we are feeling that way, we are not operating and functioning from a space of abundance. Now, it's completely different if someone is giving you reason to be tripping and you know, they doing all the things, then there are insecurities that just naturally come, but the healthy you won't continue to allow that to happen. You'll just leave if, if you know, that's something that's, that's happening in your relationships, if you're in unhealthy relationships, but that's what healing does. And abundance, adapting an abundant mindset has helped me tremendously. And as I share it, even now as I'm dating, because I'm in that space of awareness, because I recognize it, because I understand it, because I understand that my entire being needs to be about abundance for the level that I desire to go in my entire life, including my business and what I attract. Because what it does, it will not only show up in relationships but how you relate with people. So even if you're uh, an owner and you have staff, it can show up then. If you're a coach and you have coaching clients and they're, you coach them and they're doing really, really well, 
it can sneak in and show up then so abundance is how you being it's very much tied to self and so many people only attach abundance to money but it's actually a byproduct remember abundance includes when you when you embody feelings of love security this is within yourself not the what's going on around you security safety infinite possibility infinite creativity when you feel abundant you also feel creative you know i've had a few people to ask me how how do you come on consistently i feel abundant i feel like there's this infinite level of wisdom that i can tap into that creates content for me or you creates content for you actually the people that i'm coming on to to share the value with <clears throat> i don't feel a space of lack from there let's think about it like this right so abundance creates high levels of creativity so when you feel stuck complacent uninspired is coming from a place of lack i hope this is making sense to you guys right there's something somewhere there's an area where you feel you're lacking which is the opposite of abundance i hope this is making sense i hope you guys are seeing that abundance is bigger than money getting in the state of abundance is actually the byproduct of the money that's showing up in your life the money that's in your bank account right it's tapping into self-worth how you're really feeling, your self-image, how you see yourself, the thoughts and things that you're having is so much bigger than just the money. The money is a, is a byproduct. Couple things that you need to step into abundance. Number one, you need focused intentions and focused attention. Focused intentions and focused attention. This is why I talk about vision all the time because it gives you a level of focus. Well, being tapped into your vision gives you a, a level of focused attention, something that you're focusing your attention on. It also gives you focused intentions, like what are your intentions? Are you doing it with intentionality? You know, that thing, that dream, that goal, that vision that you desire, are you intentional about it? Operating from a space of, of abundance, you get there by focused attention and intention, right? Also, meditating. I, now, I know it's some believers that are saying, Scripture said meditate on the word day and night. And I think oftentimes we think it's just the words that are in the Bible. But if you go deeper into the concepts of Scripture, it says um, there's power in your tongue. Whatever a man thinks in his heart, ask and it shall be given unto him right so it's not just the scripture for those of y'all saints it's the words that you're saying it's what you're thinking because your thoughts control your feelings your listen we can take it back to jealousy right we're having a, a mature conversation here because we're going to uncover things that may have never been uncovered that may be keeping you from your next level of abundance and remember jealousy is a very natural emotion right it's just how we're processing it and moving through it and whether we're using it as a guide to make us aware of something that we really value that we just haven't stepped into that we haven't embraced that we haven't began to and this is that the, the third thing um, needed for abundance is um, greatness a level of mastery in some area I talk about the six areas of life alignment I never suggest that someone go really really hard on all six areas at one time one to three y'all know I'm a three girl right so I do things in threes but one to three areas what's one area that you would like to see another level of abundance in is it your relationships right this is what's so beautiful that's happening for me um, in my dating season because I've tapped into abundance for myself full circle because I've done inner work and healing, one, I'm attracting people who desire a safe space as well. 
and they can identify it. They know that that is what they're looking for as well. So they are also creating a safe atmosphere. So within that safe atmosphere, atmosphere, I can be abundant in how I express myself, in my feelings, all the things. Because that safe space, one, I've created it within myself. And two, I'm attracting people who desire the same thing. Before, I don't know if I knew to even call it uh, safety, <laughs> you know, that, that I was looking for. And safety, it, it means so much, guys. So when we think about the fact that one of the high values for most women is security, within security is a level of safety, whether they're going to be honest, whether they're going to be consistent, whether you got to be thinking like or if they're being dishonest, all of that stuff is under the umbrella of safety right but when you create it in yourself first you then can identify it in other people and all of that is from a space of abundance all of that is from a space of abundance so again abundance is a lot bigger than most people think a lot bigger and if it's new money that you desire, I do. It's part of my goal for this year. But my focus, my focus is really on home and relationships. You all know I break the six elements of life alignment down into six different areas. One of them is home and relationships. And the other one is finances and career. Because <clears throat> when I create more abundance in those spaces, they tend to roll over into other areas of my life they tend to kind of fix some of the other things because one if I'm looking for abundance in my relationships it means I'm working on my thinking I'm working on my mindset I'm working on my well-being this is this making sense to you all so abundance is a full circle event and when you tap into an abundant mindset you stepped into a realm of healing it begins to uncover limiting beliefs, thoughts you didn't know that you had, that may be the thing that's keeping you from the next level. That may be the thing that's keeping you from trusting the way that you need to trust in order to operate at a new level, at a new capacity. So that's my take for you guys. I was early this evening, so hopefully, <clears throat> excuse me, by the time those who thought I was coming on at 8 11, 8 11 come on they'll still be able to catch this um, energy is transferable so it'll still transfer throughout this video and for those of you who really want to go deep right before we go wide and go doing all of these other things I love to support you um, to allow you to be in the space of abundance the energy of abundance over the next 30 days Starting on the 26th, we start live. You join tonight, you start immediately with um, trainings that are already available for self-study, but the actual mastermind begins on the 26th. And it's every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. In addition, I have created a bonus because I know that what we do consist the more we do something consistently the quicker we get results and the goal is to retrain some of that subconscious thinking that's that theta stage that I was sharing with you all that is the stage that our brain just rests in uh, from zero to seven where we're just absorbing things everything there's no like deciphering or throwing out the bad we are absorbing everything and many of those things are things that we have to unlearn for our next level and so we're going to be doing that work we're going to be doing that work and it's a safe space for you to do that work energy is transferable guys and so what normally what happens when you're in that collective energy what you're desiring 
happens quicker, sooner, faster. You collapse time, right? Because the energy continues to compound in a way that it wouldn't compound if you say affirmation in January and then you start them again in May, in August. <laughs> it's still working. But it doesn't have the compound effect. It doesn't have the momentum that will allow you to collapse time, to quantum leap, and to actually manifest at a new level. And many people teach manifesting like you just hum and you just say affirmations. But for most people, for everybody, unless you've already done some work at a certain level, it means retraining some of that subconscious program and uncovering some limiting beliefs that most of the time we didn't even know we had right and we're irregardless of income levels we all have limiting beliefs there's another one that's going to pop up and another one that's going to pop up but when you've gotten into the practice when you get tools to be able to one identify them and two to retrain those thoughts to more abundant, um, higher levels of consciousness as they arise, as you continue to grow. Because remember I said in the beginning, there's levels to this. Or go to a new level, you can identify it more quickly. So as a bonus, I've created 30 days of activation. So this is outside of the mastermind. This is a bonus. You will get them through email. They're really simple but powerful activations that you can do every single day so that the work that we do during the mastermind you don't lose that flow or that momentum you can stay in that realm even after our time together inside the mastermind again she prospers again mastermind is all about abundance all about mindset manifesting those goals dreams and desires regardless of the area you're wanting to manifest those things in relationships new levels of money, um, well-being, all of those things. Uh, the, the entire space is around abundance and abundant thinking. And abundance is healing, guys. When you really tap into abundance, you tap into a realm of healing, healing some old thoughts. I'm not a doctor, but I will tell you that my journey of changing my thinking shows up in my face, in my body, the way I feel energetically. And so I invite you to join us. If you catch it before 12 tonight, you join for 777. It is going to increase at midnight. It will go up and it will continue to go up until Sunday the 26th, at which time it will be at its regular cost of $1,111. As of now, you can join in the installment, if you did installments, I think it's like 214. 214 gets you in the door, and then um, you make installment payments, three installment payments afterwards. But I just wanted to bring a new space of awareness as it related to abundance. And um, I know jealousy is looked at as this awful thing, but it's really how we process through it. If we don't get to that space, where the comparison part comes in and we don't find like the trigger like what is it about this is this something that i really value and that i desire it can become you know toxic if we haven't processed it properly but i want you to see how just that emotion alone is coming from a space of scarcity which cannot be abundance listen we got to do our own work right and just honesty with ourselves. Oh, so I was sharing how jealousy began to show up for me once I was in an unhealthy relationship and it was something that I had to heal from, but I would even notice it online, right? And, and I would have to say, hey, where's this thought coming from, Tanya? Where's this thought coming from when you see this particular person? But see, when you have the tools, you can identify, oh, that's something that I actually value. That's something that I truly desire for my life. Oh, now I can get an alignment. Now I can connect with the person if I need to. There's some type of energy or information or something that they have 
that I need for my next, right? And so we're just reversing some of the energy behind some of the ways of being that we've been being that we didn't know, we didn't know, right? Or we didn't know how to process it. Um, that's my take because I can go somewhere else. I was going to go a, a little deeper, but I definitely want to save um, the most deepest, intimate aspects of abundance and stepping into it and walking that out for those of you who are joining us in the mastermind where we have private time and you know we can talk and converse and really shift our consciousness to new levels so that we can shift what we attract that's my take let me know how this registered for you if you found value again be sure to share it with someone else i um, put hashtag replay if you are catching me in the replay and let me see if I can edit this while I'm up here. I'll put the link, okay, there, um, in the comments to the mastermind. Because somebody may be saying, I need to go now while it's on my mind before it goes up and I can take advantage of the early offer, right? So She Prospers, again, 30-day mastermind. Come, spend time with me. Let's step into new realms of abundance. Remember, abundance is a full circle event and the money is a byproduct. That's my take.